Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the City Skylines Beginner's Guide. Today we are going to be pushing the boundaries beyond our initial nine tiles. And I know we only have eight tiles, but I was kind of looking at it, I was like, you know what, we could just unlock one or we could just go ahead and unlock them all and start expanding the city out beyond. So I do want to initially do just the standard 25 tiles. So what I'm going to do, I installed 81 tiles too. I'm going to go ahead and hit this unlock central 25 tile area. And so I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure in the console version, you wouldn't just be stuck to the central 25 tiles, as you can kind of see these over here in the water. But correct me if I'm wrong, maybe you are stuck to these ones. Um, but I'm thinking that you would be able to maybe unlock some of these ones, these ones as well, which I think we will end up expanding out and uh, just unlocking 81 tiles. But what I want to do is push out our freeway connection, have this loop around, and then I want to go back to our little lowered road right here, have this come up with, with our couplet going on either side, and then we're going to do a couple service interchanges, probably one right here connecting to the couplet, and then probably one over here as well, and then we're going to go ahead and do a trumpet interchange leading into this highway, and then we're going to do a bunch of stuff. I really want to extend out our grid network, I want to put in some residential. We are We have a huge demand for residential right now, and a lot of the problems that our city is facing is has to do with just not enough workers. And so you can kind of see we're having some issues over here. I was having problems with our cargo airport. Um, I ended up having to kind of move some stuff around and then I put this road in here to provide a little bit better access for our train cargo. And so I'm kind of still waiting to see if it fixes it. I may need to go through and just replace a lot of these because you can kind of see the pathing is just not working on all the buildings. It has gotten better than what it was though. And so I'm still hopeful. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing we need to do is look at our freeway connection. So I want to bring this up and kind of loop it around and connect it in. And so what I'm thinking is I'll probably bring it up here and have it turn and then have it come all the way down here and then connect up over here. And I'm just going to throw in a little easy trumpet interchange. If anybody's interested in watching me do one of those in one of the first few episodes of this series, we actually do a large trumpet interchange right here. And I kind of go over how to do it and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in real quick. Okay, so I ended up throwing in this trumpet interchange, and so now what I want to do is just go through and place a couple of little small trees. We don't need to get crazy with it. What I'm going to do is use this boreal pine, and what I'm thinking is we'll probably just flank this ramp with them. We'll probably do it for all the ramps and try to find some uh, consistent spacing between these so that we can get some symmetry in there. And this is really just going to help kind of dress up the, the interchange a little bit, make it look a little more official rather than just kind of in the middle of nowhere, especially since there's not a lot of trees around this. And so I'll probably just do these and then I'll probably do some foliage with some rocks in the middle. Nothing too crazy, just something easy. And I think that's probably good enough. So I ended up doing a couple of those purple trees too. And just some foliage, just a rock in here. But again, it just kind of dresses it up. Small things like that can really go a long ways to make your city just look a little bit better. Okay, so I ended up finishing off the rest of the service interchanges. I just went ahead and got them all finished real quick after completing this. So I ended up doing something a little more unique over here. I didn't want to have them dump into this intersection, so I decided to kind of split up the the ramps a little bit. And this just goes a long ways to kind of separate your traffic a bit and create less congestion over here. And so, and, and you see this in real cities as well, where they split them up. For these other ones, I just did standard interchanges. I did end up adding in a couple one ways connecting these just to provide a little loop around for this. And I think this is going to actually end up working out really well. So I do want to also add in a couple underground roads. Anybody who's familiar with my Crater Lake series knows that we did uh, a couple collector roads that were underground. And I really think that it's going to help us out a lot to kind of split up the traffic a bit. So I think what we'll end up doing is creating one right here. So we're going to end up hitting page down. We want to go like right about there. And the reason for that is because it comes all the way down to our roundabout here. So now anybody who maybe wants to get over here a little bit faster can just take this road. What we could do is also have one over here as well. So we'll grab this. We'll go down again. We don't need to go super far down. Just enough to make that tunnel kind of reach. So then we will come up over here and we'll connect this as well. And so now we have two sideways connections in here. We could even have this one come down as well and kind of connect up with that. And that could be an even better connection. So if we grab this, let's go ahead and check that out just to make sure that our angles aren't too far off. So, I mean, some of these are a little bit steep, but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. You can kind of see this one is not great. I'm going to go ahead and redraw this one in. So that definitely looks a little bit better. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a bump there, but it's just because of the terrain difference there. And so before we start laying out any of our neighborhoods and stuff, I do want to place down a couple unique buildings in here just to create like a sense of a place somewhere for people to go and enjoy the day. Maybe we could do like the mall of moderation or something fun. I mean, so we have the grand mall 
Um, we also have some of our state buildings like the courthouse and stuff like that. Do we have the Central Park? This is a huge asset that I don't oftentimes get to utilize because of how big it is. But I think that this would actually be an interesting spot for us. So if we go ahead and place this right here, let's check that out. Yeah, you know what? I think that looks great. I like that it has the little amphitheater in there and a couple little plazas. And then what we can do is grab our road and just have it kind of wrap around a little bit. Let's go above ground. So we'll connect this up right there and then we will kind of bring this around. So we'll go like this and then now let's go ahead and connect this up and let's connect this one up as well. And then I think we will bring this around, go like this, and then probably bring this out as well. And I could have lined these up. You know, I think I'm going to extend this out just another two squares so that we can get it the same uh, same distance. I think it, it'll just help it to look better. And then that way what we can do, let's go ahead and grab the Theater of Wonders. And I want I don't want to just plop it down somewhere. I want to have it, I want it to have its own space. So we will bring this out. We're about three squares from the edge. So if I go like this, we're about the same distance on either side. And that way what I can do is place it right there in the middle and then we can connect up some paths and stuff and turn that into something special. So now that we have that, I'm thinking so we want it to fit in with that building. So the Theater of Wonders, we have a little amphitheater in here. We could do the Museum of Modern Art. I do like that building and I, I think that the sharp angles will match up with those with the rest of the build. Yeah, you know, what? we're going to end up doing the Museum of Modern Art. I, I think that that's going to be a good match for this area. So let's um, size it up real quick. And then so I'd, I want it to be a little bit further back. I think we'll end up following that same pattern we did on the other side. And then let's go ahead and put, plop this in here. We want it to be in the middle. Yeah, you know what? I think that that looks pretty good. And these do line up. Let's make sure that this is equal with that. Yeah, it is. Nice. And then that way what we can do is just maybe um, a couple little walking paths in here. Maybe possibly even a, some park assets. That could be good. So if we grab our paint park tool and just paint this around. Yeah, if we go like that, I think that that's going to be a good fit. Because then we can grab our pathway. So park main gate. Let's actually use the smaller one so that we can kind of line them up. And then let's try to line this one up as well. And so now we have a nice little park asset going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in some paths real quick. I'm probably just going to utilize these park paths with decorations. I'll probably do a little pattern in here. And then I'm going to connect up our, our buildings as well. So I want this to be connected up to the side. So we'll probably go like right here. Let's actually go to, let's go diagonally just so that we can, uh, and of course it doesn't want to match up. So let's go ahead and utilize the standard concrete paths. We'll go like that. And let's copy it on this side. Now I'm going to go ahead and just throw in some trees and stuff and then we'll go over it whenever I am finished. Alright, so here is our park. So I decided to do some little food truck courts over here. I really like these. Um, we were recently in Hawaii and in Hawaii they have these little courts uh, kind of spread out all over Maui. And I thought it was just really cool. You don't see these a whole lot where they're actually staple locations for people to actually come and just park their uh, their food trucks and serve out food. It's a really fun way to kind of get to know um, a bunch of different restaurants rather than actually going to a restaurant. Um, food trucks definitely provide a, a nice little uh, change. And so I ended up doing some pergolas over here with some benches. I did trees all the way around. I did a playground on this side. And then on this side, I decided to do a little ice cream parlor with some benches, a couple more little benches back here. And then I did utilize the zoo plaza in here just to kind of break it up a little bit. And you can kind of see we're messing with some terrain a little bit. There's not a whole lot we can do other than just kind of grade it all out. And I felt like grading it all out was just going to be really unrealistic for this location. Um, but overall, I think this is a pretty good little centerpiece for this area. And so now what I would like to do is start utilizing this park for our overall road layout. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and turn on snapping. And I'm going to bring these down now. And basically what I'm going to do is follow these all the way down and then have them curve and probably change the orientation of the grid. That's one of the things that I was doing a lot over here and it just helps to kind of keep things, you know, looking more natural um, rather than all the grids just look exactly the same. And so now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and throw in all these roads real quick and then we'll come back and start placing down some buildings and look out for some shopping centers and other little centralized locations like that. All right, so here is the layout. 
I decided to just do um, an extension of this neighborhood right here. I extended our collector road up here just to provide a little bit more access since it doesn't have the tunnels coming over here. But then I just did a couple cr crisscross roads going through. Back here I decided to do a couple neighborhoods rather than just having the grid pattern go through. And what this does is it separates the residential from the roads, makes it a little quieter and a little bit more safe for people to be, you know, maybe kids playing out on the road and stuff like that. And so now that we have that, I ended up leaving a couple spaces in here because we need to start doing our services. So I know we need to do like a hospital, our fire department, our police department. We need to do schools, probably a couple of each. And then we need to do some parks. We need to do a cemetery. We really need to extend out a lot of our services within here. And so let's look at our hospital first because I feel like we might be able to get some pretty decent coverage if we just plop something back here. Let's maybe create a nice little space for a hospital back here. I'm looking over at this other side though and it looks like so we have a little bit of gray over here maybe we could even place it right here i think that, that could be a good location so if we grab our road and then have this extend out and then cut in let's go back to our hospital so we'll go like this and then that way it is very centralized covers this area really well i think that's actually a really good location I think I'm going to end up doing a couple more of these covered parking spaces in there as well. So if we go into the pedestrian area plazas, let's just do a couple of these. Normally you would have quite a bit of parking within a, you know, a hospital area. but And so I'm kind of looking at this road too and it looks like this is just a little bit too close. Let's go ahead and just trim that back. And let's start placing down some parks now. So I do want to do some of these bigger ones, maybe some of the larger playgrounds as well. I think that it's just going to be a really nice touch if we have these. I really like community parks like this. So if we go like that, and then let's go ahead and place playground right there. Let's do another playground over there. And then let's um, try to place a couple more of those. So we have, I left this big space over here. I think that this would be a good spot. And then let's come back over here. So I think in here, we're just gonna do smaller ones. So we have pretty decent coverage right there, coverage right there. Let's go ahead and place one right here as well. And then let's come back here and just do a couple of these smaller ones. And then that way we have pretty even coverage for our parks. Let's go ahead and hit unpause too. We can start letting this play out. I'm gonna go ahead and do some water pipes in here real quick. All right, so now that we have water pipes down, let's go back to our services. So we have the hospital. Let's go ahead and place down, I'm thinking one of these high capacity fire stations, just because it's gonna provide some adequate coverage all the way through here. And what we could do is probably squeeze the high capacity fire department and the high capacity police department right in here. So if we grab this, let's go ahead and go up. And then what I'm thinking is connected up right there. It does look like we have a little bit of traffic coming over here. I'm guessing because of these uh, these buildings right here, the unique buildings tend to generate a lot of traffic. So let's go ahead and place this right here. And I do believe that the high capacity police department is on the smaller side. Yeah, so if we go like that. So that does look good. I want to just extend this road out a little bit. It is a little bit of a cul-de-sac, but I think it is still a nice location for this. We are probably going to put up a fence around this because I really wouldn't want this to be like staring at the residential right there. I think that would be a bad fit. So now we have adequate coverage for fire, police, and hospital, which is fantastic. It does look like maybe we need to do just a small clinic over here. I think that that could be good. So if we, let's go ahead and just place it like right there. Just provide a, that little bit of coverage for that uh, carryover over there because we had a little bit of gray. And just because it's gray doesn't mean that they're not going to have ambulances go over there. Um, a lot of this has to do with land value and just proximity to services like that. And so homes that are closer to these services uh, tend to be worth more and then they end up upgrading more. And uh, same with real life, like if you're not near services, um, it does affect your land value. And so now that we have those, I do want to do a couple cemeteries. We, we really need to provide some death care. And then I think we're gonna do an elder care and a child care as well. So I think for a cemetery, this could actually be a good location right here. And then what we can do is grab our crematorium and put it like right in the middle. We could even move that over and just kind of line them up rather than having that square in the middle. And then we'll just grab a couple trees and surround this with trees real quick. Just kind of make it, you know, into a nice little space. And so now that we have that, let's go ahead. So we have death care, we have fire and police, we have health care, we have parks. Now we need to do our schooling. So I think I'm gonna utilize this high capacity elementary school just because it, you know, it provides more coverage, but then I also wanna get a good mixture of high density and low density buildings in here. So I think if we go ahead and turn this into an education complex, if we grab this, have a little turn in road and have it come around. And the reason I do this is because it kind of just simulates, uh, you know, like a parking lot almost. Um, it's definitely more of an American style, like you would probably just have the elementary school off this road. 
but I like having the separation. I think it creates a nice little look in there. So if we go like that and then let's place the high capacity over here and then let's look at some of our other buildings now. So if we bring this around, come all the way around now and then connect this up, can we fit in some parks? And then I'm thinking the gymnasium. So what we can do, let's go ahead and trim this back just a bit and then let's put the gymnasium on this side. Cause I really, the gymnasium is definitely more for the high school. Go ahead and go like this. And then that way what we can do is go back to our parks and grab, grab our tennis courts. And then let's grab basketball courts as well. I think that looks good. So now we have a nice little complex in here. Sports hall and gymnasium. We have the high capacity high school. We have a tennis court and a basketball court as well as a little small playground. I think that this looks pretty good. And so for decorations, I'm just gonna go pretty light on it. I'll probably do these young lindens through this whole area, just to kind of create a separation in there and uh, some uniformity with the trees. I think it looks a little bit better. And then I will probably just use the live oak, some of the bigger trees in the back. And then we'll probably do a fence around the back just because it's kind of open. I think that it maybe be a little bit safer and you do tend to see uh, fences around schooling areas. So we'll probably grab the park fence Go ahead and turn off snapping and just kind of bring this around. And that way there's at least a little bit of a separation on that back so that kids don't just kind of roam into the streets. So then we will go ahead and fill this in, fill that in. Let's go a couple little trees and then let's do the horse chestnut. I think that this tree is just such a good combo for that live oak. All right, so we have our schooling over here. We have a couple parks. We have our cemetery. We have all of our services. We have a huge park right here, which I think is fantastic. I do want to put in a small, a couple small little uh, shopping centers in here before we start plopping down any residential. So what I'm thinking, we'll probably use this two lane road and I want to do something similar to what we did on the other side. So I want to create, turn this into like a little shopping center. So I'm thinking, and we'll bring this up and I want to leave enough room for one square on that other side. And you can kind of see, I just went a little bit too far on that side. What I can do is grab a fence and then I'm just going to have this fence go around. I'm going to leave a little bit of a, sp a space for a path so what i'm thinking is probably right there and then we will cut in let's go ahead and go diagonal so that we can do something cool right there and then we'll leave another space for a path right there and then we will come all the way across and what this does is it just allows us to have a little more zoning on this side and you can kind of see it didn't allow the full zoning there so what i'm going to try to do is just upgrade this road and see if it fixes it now let's go ahead and put in those paths before we uh, get a little too ahead of ourselves and then let's go ahead and put in a couple small low density commercial places so i think i'm gonna go like that go like that and then i think we will use a couple of the smaller ones on these sides just because i don't want to have uh, some huge buildings in there so let's go ahead and place one right there let's go ahead and place one right here as well and then let's mimic that on this side and then i think we're going to use this as a little bit of a green space with like a courtyard in the middle i think that that could be good so if we come across, go like this, and then let's go ahead and connect this up going this way, connect it up going this way, and then let's see if we can get one going diagonal. I don't think we can. And then so we have one shopping center. Let's go ahead and plop down another one right here. And so I'm probably going to follow that same kind of idea that we had with that one. And then that way we can kind of leave this space empty for, I kind of wish that we had a little bit more room on that one. You can kind of see because of the diagonal or just not in a great spot for that. So if we go like that, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a separation, which is what I was going for. So now what we can do, let's go ahead and do the same kind of thing. Let's actually do our paths first before we forget. And then let's do our zoning now. So we'll go right there. Let's go right here. Let's do another big one just right across the street. And then we'll do a row of smaller ones. And so now we have created a couple little shopping centers in here with some separation so that these don't turn into huge strodes. And then we do have a couple other areas that we could put in some more. So we definitely want to do some corner markets. We want to make it so that people can walk around and go to the store easily rather than having to hop in their car and kind of drive around. That's really what we're trying to avoid here. So we could do an even bigger one here, like a, a large shopping center. I'm thinking because those two are there though, it's not really gonna be needed. I'm tempted to do a row of high density. I just know that it's going to generate a ton of traffic and kind of turn this into just a mess. I really wanna get some uh, varying heights though. Maybe we'll check it out and then we can always come back and kind of get rid of it if it ends up becoming a little too much for this area. Because I would really like to get some sort of little main street, you know, with some taller buildings and and uh, just make it look a little bit, a little bit better. So I think that's good. We got a commercial there, commercial there, commercial strip right here. It'd be good for us to get one over here. So we have one right there. 
let's maybe put one up here. So we'll grab this and grab our road. And I want to do something similar. So we're going to have this go in and then we're going to have it go out. And then let's uh, plop down just a couple of these small. We could even do this for our high density area on the other side. That could probably look a little bit better better have our path come all the way down connect up right there let's know we have a few little shopping centers i'm really tempted to turn this into something else because i know that this is just going to mess up this road go ahead and do we're going to do a frontage road for it so if we grab this right mouse click the entire thing just get rid of it all and then what we can do maybe even a pedestrian road that could be good so if we grab this and go all the way down now and then what we can do now is come in here and turn this into our high density so we'll go ahead and do four squares off of both sides and we need to make sure that this is painted as a pedestrian pedestrianized area. Otherwise we're gonna have issues with deliveries. So we'll go like this and then let's go ahead and we need a small industrial area for this. Maybe we'll put it off this backside, just go like right there. And then that way what we can do is go into our pedestrian areas tab and grab our large pedestrian areas service point. We don't really need to get too crazy with this. So I'm just gonna plop one of these down rather than the goods and the trash separate because I think that this is gonna be enough to kind of cover that whole area. But then this way we can actually do some trees in here too and kind of create a little separation. I think this was a, a good idea, a little bit better than having it on the road. Um, I do also want to connect up the rest of our area with paths before we start really going to town with this. We really want to promote walking and the best way to do that is just to make sure that you have adequate path coverage. Because a lot of times, and you see this in real cities too, where cities just keep building out like freeways and roads and then they're wondering like, well, you know, nobody's taking our public transit. Well, it's, you keep expanding modes of transportation other than public transit. And so it's actually promoting people to to not take public transit. The more you build out, like say metro or buses or anything like that, the more people will utilize them. And so a lot of times it's just about what you choose to build. So we'll end up building this across, building this across. And we still need to remember, I wanna do a, a little transit hub too, I completely forgot. So we'll bring this down. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of these with paths and then we'll start working on that transit center. All right, so I got paths going all the way through. I did end up having to switch over to our uh, regular pavement path because was having issues with the regular park path snapping. I decided to keep these the same though because I felt like it created a nice little look. I did also connect up um, all of our, our parks as well. You can kind of see I forgot this one, but um, the other ones I did connect up and it now just mixed into an extended park. We'll come back through and uh, probably add in some more trees and stuff. And you can even see with some of these too that it allows you to extend it out. So probably we should probably use the gravel path for those. And so we'll go like that. And let's go ahead and extend out the other ones too while we're at it. So if we grab this, let's go ahead and connect this up. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over here, connect that up. So now what we want to do is identify a good location for a nice little transit center. So we have train and metro over here. We have metro over here. So we definitely want this to come up and probably turn. It would probably be good if we had it turn right at the beginning of this road. And so we could turn this into a transit center right here, or we could go a little bit further down. I'm thinking because it's across from our central park with these two other unique buildings this will probably be the best location so let's go ahead and go into our metro tab now and see what we got so we could use this one we've used this one throughout our city which isn't necessarily bad but we've um you know what actually i like it and i get it probably is more realistic as well as uh, uh the city could maybe just commission an architecture firm to build out one and then it just kind of copies it to save money so we'll go ahead and go like this, place it right there. And then what we need to do now is just connect it up with that. And of course we uh, definitely didn't think about this. I should have done it before we did the, the commercial. I kind of messed up. So now we have a stop right there, stop right there. Let's go ahead and check out our underground as well. I'm gonna hit that V button just so that we can go underground. So we have one right here coming up and we have a stop right there, stop right here. It would be good if we could have them close to each other. So maybe what I'm thinking, we come up here, have this come up, stop right there, and then we'll have it loop around and stop into the same center as this. I think that that could be actually really good. So we're going to delete this and then go back underground, delete a little bit of this. We don't need to do a lot, just a little bit. And then let's grab our underground one slope too steep so it looks like it wants to be sideways because of the slope oh you know what? there you go grab one of these i'm thinking this diagonal one this one could be good so let's grab a road and we will i want to probably utilize the bus pedestrian road so we'll come up here we'll have it come right next to this and then have it go right there and then that way we can grab this 
And the reason I'm doing two is because we're gonna end up creating another line in here. Yeah, let's go right there. And then we will connect these up now. So we need to hit page down, go underground, come around here, and then let's um, turn this now and just connect this up and voila. So now we have our line extended. Oh, we need to connect this up real quick. All right, and so now we can grab our blue line. Let's go ahead and hit play so that we can let this line kind of figure itself out real quick. Because these aren't pedestrian areas, they're giving us little notifications right now. Um, we do need to extend out our pedestrian area though for this uh, transit center now. Let's go ahead and do a bus terminal as well. So we have two metro. Let's, uh, we would wanna definitely get a bus terminal in here. So compact bus station. I like this one. This one's one of the ones that we got with the pedestrian with the plazas and promenades. This one's actually really nice. Does it allow, doesn't allow um, inner city buses, but that's maybe not the end of the world. I don't know if we need an inner city bus. We could just plop one of these down instead. Let's check out our bus lines though, because I don't think we have a huge amount of bus lines. So I think we only have buses over there. So maybe, you know what, we're gonna scratch that. Let's go ahead and do just a tram area in here. I think that that would be good. So let's um, look at our pedestrian roads, grab our pedestrianized street with tram tracks. Let's um, upgrade these to tram roads instead of bus roads. And then now what we can do, let's go ahead and go like this and let's leave three squares in the middle and then we'll leave three squares in the middle. Go ahead and cut this in now. Go ahead and cut this in, go like that. And then that way we have like a makeshift tram terminal in here, which I think is gonna be really cool. We do need to set up our tram lines though. All right, so now that we have that, let's uh, connect up these side roads and then we will place down our tram lines and start placing down some residential because it's going to take a little while for these to kind of grow in. And then uh, we still need to extend out our metro line up here as well. So let's grab this, come up over here, grab this line, and then bring this all the way down. And then what we need to do is make sure that we still got our two stops in here. And so now that we have that, let's um, do our tram lines. We will grab our tram tracks. And so we have quite a bit of tram lines. We have a little station right there. We have tram lines coming all the way up here. Let's go ahead and just, we have stops coming through here. Maybe we'll add in another small station right there. I think that that could be good. So let's do three up here now. We'll grab this. So we want this to pretty much cover this whole area. All right, so I have this one going this way. And then what I'm gonna do is just basically cover these directions. I want that to be on the opposite side. So if we go like this, then we will come up here. Let's go ahead and do a small stop right there. Have this loop down come this way and basically what i'm thinking for this we want to have um adequate coverage but it's going to funnel people into our transit stop which is really what we're trying to do here and then for the last line so we have both of these squares covered what i'm thinking is we can have it come down here loop up around here and then come up over here and then just loop around i, don't, I actually don't know how well that's going to work so we have this line coming up over here let's actually we're going to have this one connect up with the other station so we'll have it come down here. We don't have any stops in the middle here. So I think that this is a good good time to get something going. So then we'll have this come around and then loop back. So now we have three tram lines that are, I mean, covering most of this area. Let's go ahead and change the colors. Let's go white and we'll go like a teal and then let's do a green. I think we already have some of those, but I think that that's gonna be okay. Let's go ahead and choose a different tram as well. So we'll do, let's do these ones, the 130s. I think that's actually the one that we chose for most of the city. Oh no, so we have a couple others. And so now once the trams get over here, it'll start populating those areas and everything. Um, let's start placing down some homes because we are definitely in need of a lot of residential. So what I'm thinking, this is gonna end up being a residential, just a low density residential neighborhood. So I'm gonna come through and just kind of fill in a lot of these and then we'll come through here, probably do a good mix of low density in here, but I do wanna get some high density around these taller buildings in here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and place down all of our zoning real quick. All right, so I ended up zoning in the a good majority of all this. So I did end up turning these into separate districts. So now we have three districts in here. And so we have Concord Heights, Lilac Park and Thornton Square. And so what I would like to do, or what I did was, I turned this into self-sufficient and then I kept these two standard. And so now our residential demand has collapsed and our commercial demand has spiked up a little bit. And this is just in proportion to uh, the residential. So now we have a commercial center right there, commercial center right here. I added in a few more commercial over here just to kind of help with the growth. 
and then we have this big area i did um do some high density in here we're going to kind of go through and probably play whack-a-mole with some of these because i don't want it all to be just the same kind of building um, but we do need to go in and add in some more spaces in here so i think we're going to end up doing some like walking paths around here like a green belt then i want to add in like maybe some more commercial in here and kind of just make it look a little bit better because right now we just have a bunch of spaces that are kind of open. What I'm thinking is we will add in a path in here to create a nice little green belt. And I'll probably have this just go all the way around. And then it looks like we have a little bit of space for a park in here. I think that this could be a good location for maybe even a couple dog parks. We'll do a playground. And then let's uh, try to fit one more back here if we can. Maybe we'll move the dog park over. And don't worry, we're going to come back through and kind of connect these up. I know right now it probably looks a little sporadic. We haven't really done any trees or anything yet. And so we're still waiting for a lot of this residential to come in. So we do need to satisfy some of our residential or our commercial demand. So I'm looking at this space right here. And because it's near this uh, intersection, I think it would be another a really good spot for a, another little shopping center like what we did before. So if we grab this, go into our road, turn back on snapping, and then have this come up... And then let's do just a couple little small shops in here. Nothing too crazy. Probably the three by threes. And then because this is on the inside and it's actually not connected to the main road, I feel a little bit better just zoning this section out and then putting in some trees and stuff. Yeah, you know what? I think this already looks a lot better. I think for this section, we'll kind of fill this in. So I left blanks in here to be able to do some trees and stuff and to uh, just make it look a little bit better rather than having these all kind of filled in. So I'll probably do some pergolas and then create some little courtyards. Now all we need to do is just kind of let it play out. So let's check out our schooling. So our elementary is definitely, definitely suffering. We um, we need to do another of the high density elementaries. And I think over here, because we did the high density right here, I think, you know, this location actually looks really great for it. So let's um, pause and we're going to delete this row. And then let's go ahead and remove all this and have a road go in. And then we're going to do our little around road again. Go like this. Let's go ahead and connect it up right there. And then let's come back here and we'll connect it up right there. And then let's go into our elementary. We could probably even utilize. This is the um, heart of Korea elementary school. And so, oh man, it, I didn't even realize it. 1,740. That is so many students. I um, guess I never checked the, the capacity on that. I just assumed that it was going to be the same as the other one. So I don't think we even need to do anything else here. We'll probably just keep that as the primary elementary um, for this area. So if we go back now, we should be pretty good. Yeah, our capacity is way up now. And so that actually should help with um, attracting people to the city now. And, and then so our, our high school still has quite a bit of room. Our university has a lot of room. Um, you know what we didn't do is libraries. Um, and we were pretty good at doing them early on. And I think I've just kind of forgotten. Let's do a public library like right here. So then the libraries do have coverages. So it looks like we could probably utilize one over here and one over here as well. And because these aren't growing out, I think what I'm gonna do is just place this in the middle and then we'll come over here and probably do the same thing. But I wanna actually create a space for this one too. So if we grab a road, let's go ahead and put it across from the park again so that we can make it into a nice little area. Remove zoning right there, grab our road, come in here and then do basically the same thing um, create a little road that goes around. And this is just basically like a drive for the, for the library. So we'll do that. And so libraries actually do boost education as well. They are really good to have in your city. We do have quite a few. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 libraries. Um, we have quite a bit of capacity and we could even go into our policies now. So if we come down here and hit on this policies tab, we can go to city planning. And whenever you're in here, not connected to a specific district, these are actually citywide policies. So we can come in here and I believe there's one called a book fair. It might be in services. Yeah, so if we go in here, so schools out, yeah, book fair. So we want to do this one. So at the local public libraries organize a book fair, increase happiness and entertainment within the public library radius cost public libraries upkeep increased by 100%. We have quite a bit of headroom with our profits, so I think that that is a good thing for us to have. While we're in here, we can kind of play around with this other stuff too. Oh, hey, look, Megalopolis. Wow, I didn't even realize. I knew we were close, but it'd been a while since I looked at it though. So we um, have hit the last milestone. We got the International Airport, the Cargo Airport Hub, and the Metropolitan Airport. 
which with our current problems with the cargo airport, uh, it might be smart for us to place that down. Maybe we'll place that somewhere in our city. So I think for the cargo, let's, let's see if this big one will fit. So it looks like it's going to fit right there. Let's see if this, it allows 30 trucks. We're already using 15 out of this one. So let's see how that does. Cause I'm guessing it's because of the high density and then it's covering this area as well. Um, but this is already looking pretty good. Um, I think for this area, what I was playing around with is another unique building. I was kind of looking at this transport tower. I think that placing this there is going to be a fun addition. It's kind of tall, but that's why I did the high density around it too. But I think because it's a little transit center, it's kind of fitting for this area. And then for these little middle sections, what we'll end up doing is just uh, some pathways with some pergolas. And people don't actually utilize these. I, I wish they did, but just makes it look a little bit better. And then for these areas, I'll probably do some flower beds and stuff. Um, let's go ahead and attach up a path over here. And let's do just a small little uh, commercial in here too. I think that that could be good. So if we do that, let's actually do um, some organic and local produce. Nice. And so now we'll get a couple little uh, like fruit shops and veggie shops and stuff in there. And I don't know why this section's not really growing. So we're getting growth over here. We're just not really getting growth in these other two sections. Let's check out our services just to make sure that we are okay. We placed that elementary there, so we should be good. We got a library, we have death care. I'm guessing it's just because of the demand. It's just gonna take a little bit of time for these to kind of grow up. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump into a detailing time lapse while this kind of grows up. I'm having on three speed. Let these buildings grow in, and then so I'm gonna do trees around our little green belts. I'm gonna fill in a lot of these smaller spaces with some courtyards, kind of like what I did with the pergolas. I really want to get some statues in there and just make it into some nice areas next to these buildings rather than just having it, you know, building after building after building. And I'll come through here and do some tree lined roads and stuff like that. Just kind of really clean it up. And so I'm going to jump into that and I will catch you guys on the other side.
All right, so I have finally finished, and I gotta admit, this actually took quite a bit of time. This was a really big space. So first couple things that I did, I ended up turning this into a mid-century modern neighborhood, as well as this, I really wanted to get like a good mix, just something new. We don't have any of the mid-century modern assets in our city yet. And one of the cool things with this uh, content creator pack, you can actually go into your districts and then just choose it as a district style and it uh, kind of engulfs it all rather than going into here and choosing one of these like you would do with the self-sufficient, um, well, like what we did with this neighborhood. And so jumping back into this view, we can zoom in, kind of see some of the finer details that I did. So I ended up doing a pathway following this road just to kind of clean it up, uh, made it tree lined with the young lindens. I ended up doing these rows of these plazas because I really wanted to get something that was going to kind of match up and really help to fill in these spaces. And I did that in quite a few locations. I did it a couple over here as well. You can kind of see this one. And then I went through and put in trees. You can kind of see I forgot to do trees here. It's a, It looks like it's definitely missing something. I'm going to do that after we are done talking about all this. Um, did trees along this backside. Just created a really nice area for people to kind of walk around. And zooming in, you can kind of see a lot of people are actually us utilizing our paths, which is awesome. This just goes back to what I was saying before is if you put more paths, more people will utilize them. And so we have paths going through all of these neighborhoods. Um, and now the centerpiece of this build, I think, is our little main street over here. I kept going back and forth what to do with this. So I decided to just do a path to kind of fill in the space. And I initially wanted to do trees. But the problem was because the path was there, it just didn't want to allow me to place them down. And I could have probably just moved the path over a little bit uh, if I tried. Um, I did it in a couple spaces and it just wasn't really going to work out that well. So I decided to do these pergolas with the benches and I think that this look just is really cool and you can kind of see all the people walking down here it is just awesome to see this many people utilizing our transit options and then to see this just hustling and bustling the way that it is um, and so going over to our other mid-century modern neighborhood very similar to what I did on the other side just filled it in with trees I ended up doing trees and foliage to kind of go alongside our road over here and I really like these setbacks a lot I like it when you put in these trees rather than just having buildings kind of fill in the spaces I think it looks a little more natural. And then coming over to our self-sufficient neighborhood, I did a tree-lined road going down the middle. This kind of reminds me a lot of those master plan communities that we have in the southwest of the United States. I'm sure that they're throughout the world, but uh, basically what a developer does is purchases this large piece of land and decides to lay out the roads, do park access, do the homes, and they sell it as like this whole package. And they're actually really nice. Um, a lot of times their walkability isn't the greatest, but it really depends on on the overall layout um, but they do tend to have a lot of walking paths it's just there isn't a lot of shopping centers and stuff nearby and so they do tend to be a little car dependent but I, I really like these options I like that we got the transit center in here I really felt like it uh you know brought it all together and made it look good especially with our transport tower here I think it looks really cool and so we actually did a lot on this episode and this really is going to lean into this whole area and so we already have a couple high density neighborhoods like we got this one and this one I'd really like to get a larger kind of downtown. Um, but what I'm thinking is we'll possibly lean into this into for like another downtown. Because um, we got the downtown over here and we got a couple little smaller downtowns. And so I think that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this episode, you will definitely enjoy the episode on your screen. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.